This is the Park Shore Coin and Collectibles Hour with your host, Scott Heiligman, on Fox Sports Radio. Today, we will discuss all the latest information and hottest trends on everything from coins and sterling silver to baseball cards, vintage toys, and a whole lot more. Find information about the show at www.parkshorecoin.com. That's www.parkshorecoin.com. And now, your host, Scott Holligman. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this hey, week's hey. Park Shore Coin and Collectibles Hour. And we are in the studio. Yes, we are. Exactly. And we've got uh, we've got Scott Heiligman, owner of Park Shore Coin and Collectibles, in the studio with us. It's a happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you, Scott. That was great. It was a lot of traffic for Saturday morning. I was a few minutes late. Oh, my. It's our, not like our, me. Our part of paradise is becoming like... Uh, it's very like, desirable. Yeah, it's very desirable. With more traffic. Yeah. You know, we, Even in the summer, scorching heat, people still love it. I love the summer here. Oh, I do too. I like the heat. I you get too. hot, you get an air conditioning. Yeah. I mean, and you go up north, and it's hot there too. It's exactly. hot all over the country right now. Yep. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's that summertime. time of year. Summertime. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that doesn't stop the collectibles market. It, no, no, no. Auctions are hot. Everything uh, moving right along in that regard. Hot like a lot of day. turmoil in the markets. A lot of people confused. Don't know what's going on. Well, that's Scared, one of the reason we're on the air you know, is to help, yeah. help with that confusion. A lot of people selling. They never thought they would sell their stuff. They want to just get rid of it. They don't know. They don't want to, you know, they just don't know. A lot of unknowns. Right. People right. are kind of slimming down, if you want to say that. Right. You know, cleaning out. People are moving. People are selling homes. There's a lot of people moving here, and then they got too much stuff, and they say, oh, my God, I got a storage facility here, and those are not cheap. Right. You know, and the housing market's going through the roof. So yeah. all that space. It's funny you mentioned that inventory. You're right. Storage units are through the roof through the because roof. they've doubled, and they're, and they're building as many as they fast as they oh, can. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's still not enough. It's still not enough. Still, it's just like housing. We are growing fast here. We are growing yep. fast. We're in a wonderful part of the world. Yeah, but we are. Southwest man, Florida, yeah. Naples, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Marco Island area. Welcome to paradise. Yep. <laughs> the beach. Well, you know what? You mentioned just now that there's a lot of confusion out there, and one of the things we do with this show for you, you that are new to the show, listening to us. Uh, we talk about, of course, everything in the collectibles world, but we try to clarify a lot of the issues that Scott runs into with his business at his office. And he sees a lot of stuff. Absolutely. So that's Customers part of Customers all day, and I've been doing it my whole life for right. the most part. I've done a lot of transactions, and yeah, everyone's a little bit different. That's the thing about it. Right. People ask me, you know, how do you do it? How do you do it? It's this experience. Sure. You know, learned it, a lot of transactions. Uh, I, and, and I know that you have to temper people's expectations. But sometimes they it goes the opposite uh, way. It, it happened a lot way. this week. They go wow. Oh yeah, a couple of times because jewelry. We're talking about it. It's just it really adds up nicely. You know, people will clean out a drawer. They'll bring in three three necklaces. Sometimes one, two, three thousand dollars, wow. and they'll just say like, wow. You I had know, no idea for sure. I did a house call with some gold, uh, silver coins, and you know, just scattered all through a, a cabinet, and it came to twenty two fifty. And the guy was just like, wow. He's like, they, and, you know, when I went through, he's like, I don't think any of it has any value. Right. We have no idea. We're moving. And one of those things. A lot of people don't know what they have. And that's yeah. why this show is good, too. Yeah. We try to put visuals. But, you know, also knowing you're in good hands, being, you know, open and honest with your customers. I show them what they have. I pull out the book a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, hey, this is what you have. And they like that. And so, we just work on a specific margin. Yeah. We do what's fair. And that's how, you know, we get word of mouth. And that's how you build a business. And it's been working well. I guess a follow-up statement to that would be never assume. Never assume. If you sense that it has value and you visit Scott's website and you say, you know, I got some things that might be. Yeah. They look a lot alike what you've got. Yeah. Give him a call or yeah. text him or right. reach out to him via this web the website. If it's on eBay, I'll probably buy it. Right. I mean, there's a market for it. Right. We were talking earlier, we're opening an auction house eventually right. Right. in the next month or so. We'll be able to put it on there, you know, local, so you don't have to mail the stuff out. You know, the local Fort Myers, South Coast Floridians can just bring their stuff in. If and, you want to uh, see what Scott's buying and selling, yep. uh, visit his website. And the website is www.parkshorecoin.com. Yep. That's parkshorecoin.com. You'll see the types of items that he deals with. You're also going to see a lot of testimonials. Yes. Which are very important. Customer feedback. You read those testimonials and you're probably going to see something in there that you have that someone else has sold. Yep. And they sold it for good money. That's right. Because it's all about bringing top dollar. For and sure. You do pay top dollar. We try. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, 
That's part of the That's business. That's the object. We, That's part of the business. We bid high so we get the business. Yeah. You know, if somebody comes in, we want the raw of them. Yeah. You know, That's and true. we want, and we know a lot of people are shopping items around too. Mm -hmm. So we keep that in mind. So you keep the bid high and uh, it just works out well. I keep the overhead low and uh, so I can bid high. Right. You know. So with that in mind, keep keep Scott in mind. If, you, if you're Please do, pricing yeah. something out, reach out to him. You could call him at 239-961-0816. That's right. That's 961-0816. He's very text -friendly. Or just pop on over. We're right there off 75 in Immokalee. Yep. Can't miss us. So we'll yep. be in our new location uh, probably within a month. And you really can't miss a sign because we'll have signage all over the street yep. there. Uh, but right now, yeah, we're still in the Strand. We're always going to be there in North Naples. Yep. And uh, uh, we've got some good customer feedback and they like us and they, you know, like being able to come in. And like we were saying, we have customers who come in multiple times. Yeah. You know, they do a little bit at a time and then they find stuff. They tell their friends, they bring stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there, Sure. you know, and we do a lot of research on it too. That's what customers like too. They'll bring stuff in that I've never seen. You know, I don't pretend to know it all. And, you know, I, a lot of times I sit there 10 minutes, we go through the auctions, we go through all the history of the items, and then we together find a fair price. I think that's, that's the way to that's, that's the, the only way approach. to do it you know yeah. uh, that's what we do with coins hey i sell this coin for 32 dollars. i will buy it for 26 yes. okay that yes. makes sense to them right you know instead of just rifling through we go through take our time then at least they're comfortable and sometimes they say hey now i know what i have i want to hold on to it a little bit longer that's fine too yeah yeah and, and you've told us in past shows that know many have. times They'll come back when they're ready. Yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, I want them to be able to know what they have, too. Sure. A lot of times people inherit stuff. They're given things. Mm -hmm. and they have no you, clue. You made a comment when we started the show that you visited at someone's home oh, yeah. to look at some jewelry. So you make house calls. House calls, yeah. There they're very go. popular right now. A lot of people are not mobile down here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like we are just talking about that traffic, a lot of people just don't like leaving the house. Right. It's a lot easier if they can just have me come over after hours and... Uh, kind of go through the things. Sure, take you a know, look then at they it. They don't have to pack them up, lock it in. And they, a lot yeah. of times they don't know what I'll take anyway. They think they know. They're, it's a lot easier if I can just come there and say, "Do do do." Are they? I got to ask you, Scott. Are they surprised sometimes when they lay all these things out and they say, "Certainly, he's going to buy this, this, and this," but you end up buying that, 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 and that, that for you know? sure. Yeah, that they happens go, too. Scott, I would have thought you would have wanted. Yeah, because that happens a lot of times. Because a lot of people think just because something's really old that it's kind of collectible and valuable. Yeah. You know, that's not necessarily true. Right. You know, you, you know niche what things you got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially on coins. I mean, you can have a coin from the 1800s. It's worth three, four, five dollars. Right. You know, you think you're looking at it. Oh, my God. Look at this seated dime. <laughs> yeah. Things got to be worth a thousand dollars from, wow, 1865. Yeah. If looks, you know were, what I mean? if looks were valuable, it'd be worth a thousand dollars. Right. So they'll say, yeah. wow, look at you're paying that for that. And then I'll pay like nine dollars for <laughs> a 1964 half dollar. Yeah. And they'll just like, wow! I never would have thought you wanted those this Kennedys. Is a, this is a hundred years old. Yeah, why, so, why this? Yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and in the coin market, it comes down to condition, condition, too. and how many were how Mint. many were were, were minted, printed? Yeah, yeah, minted. Yeah, absolutely. Very important. How many made it through? Even yeah. that's another important one too. Some uh, coins that are uh, minted a little bit more than another coin are actually more expensive and more rare because not many made it through in a certain condition. Right. So if they're looking for higher grades or uncirculated, which is what the high-end retail customer, you know, that's who the big market is, are the high-end coins, ones you see that sell for six figures. Yeah. You know, those are the high-grade, uncirculated coins. Sometimes only a few make it through mm -hmm. and never make it onto auction. So, yeah. uh, you know, they become very, very collectible. And, and the demand is there. And that's what you're also, yep. when you're looking at coins, you're thinking, okay, I not only is the condition, the mintage, but where the demand is. Mm -hmm. And you'll tell people, there's a high demand for that coin. That's, that, well, yeah. that's the reason I can give you more. Yeah, and the market supply and demand is very important. Supply and demand. You know, that's why it makes it very confusing. I have customers all the time say, oh, my God, I was looking up what my coin is worth online. And, you know, sometimes they see one for, an identical yeah. coin for three, 4000 yeah. And then I have to say, well, you can't just look what people are asking for it. you got to see what they've actually completed. Because that takes a few more steps right. to see what people have actually bought something for in an auction. Yeah than just to see what things are for sale for. Yeah. And so they'll say, oh my, $350 is for sale. Yeah. Well, six of them sold for $28.50. Just because I want $350 you know I mean? doesn't mean I'm going to get yeah, $350. Right. Or and it's like fishing, I there. guess. They probably hope someone will it come It confuses walking. people, though. Right, but if somebody's trying to do their own research and has no idea about coins, yeah. they're going to see that, and they're going to come in and just really be confused. Yeah. So it's always good to bring it to an expert. 
uh, to get a fair evaluation. That's what I do, free evaluations. It's like a comparative market analysis. Right. You know, for realtors, you know, they say, hey, come over. I'll let you know what my house is worth. Sure. I'll print out all the info. Here's what you have. Here's what it's worth. Here's what I'll pay for it. Uh, here's what I think I'll get for it in auction or when I resell it. Right. That's the thing. Our object is to get top dollar on the back end so we can pay more to the customer. Yes. That's why I'm yes. going to the auction house route because yes. yes. then I can be the end retailer. Yes. That makes sense. Then I can pay more to the customer. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you think about it. You're, you're, you're in the whole process. Sometimes you're a broker. Yeah. And sometimes you're, you're, you're buying Sometimes I got to flip it the same day because yeah. – uh, it's such a high dollar amount, and the market change. If it if you're buying something on three percent margin, and the market goes down three percent, you're then breaking even. Right. Yes, it can go up one or two, but you can't count on it going up. Right. You, it, you can count on it going down on a short term basis sure. to totally ruin your deal, and so that's why sometimes you you don't keep much inventory on hand, and then security purposes is another one. You know, I can ha get stuff at any time. Takes a day or two to get it in, but I don't sit on a six-figure inventory at my store. Right. I have no reason to. No reason. You know, things have transitioned into. Well, there are companies that do that. Yeah. There are coin, you know, bullion dealers. That's part of their part of their deal. Right. I'm more of a big buyer. Pay the most for that. Yeah. Do I get coins in for sale? Yeah. Of course I do. Sure. You know, it comes along the territory of being a dealer. But a lot of times I turn them over. And here's what people don't realize: in the wholesale coin business. You can find, you know, dealers who will buy infinite amount, infinite amount for me, and they will pay the same price, maybe one percent less yeah. than what a retail sitting it in a store countertop, keep it there for a week or two, yeah. can sell it the same day or keep it there in two weeks with market fluctuations, waiting for a customer to come in. I mean, if you're doing large volumes, you can't just have it sitting in a right. You really have to look at market fluctuations, don't you? Of course. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a precious metal. It's a commodity. Daily, yeah. Yeah. Hourly can even be a little yeah. bit tricky. So I'll have some people say, hey, how much you mine a uh, gold cougar in for? Well, I'll look in spot price what it is today, 1745 Well, it could be 1719 by the time they come in tomorrow or even later this day. Right. You know, so that's why I always say spot, it's predicated on what right. the price is at the time. And So if, if somebody does call you, use a Kruger Rand as an example. Mm-hmm. Would you say you know what it's a it depends on spot price. Yeah, it's some going to be somewhere between seven fifty and seven seventy five, but it depends on when you. What I say is spot price, and then depending on the coin, at the most it'll be one or two percent behind that. Okay, you know that's what I'll buy it for. If it's a really high premium, high quality one, I can probably get you a full spot for it, but I try not to. I try to make a few dollars. You know, right. I'm going to fork out that much cash, uh, but that's that's the nature of it. So you don't necessarily commit to a number over the phone bring it yeah, in. yeah very difficult so i have to see it too because sure. there's a bunch of nicks and marks in that gold eagle yeah. or those morgan dollars makes a big difference yeah. too yeah you know if you're listening to us and we're in this conversation about coins you realize that scott's business is not just coins we talked about jewelry Lots at the jewelry, beginning of the yeah. show but with his business i mean it's 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 sports it's memorabilia broad. yeah the majority of it is is coins and jewelry and sports memorabilia but yep. there's other things that are involved you know with his show too i mean as far as with with his business i mean it's political buttons and you know i can look here I can sterling silverware is a big one sterling silverware yeah everyone's got a set and that's another thing i have been turning away so many silver plate sets I even tell the customers, I know these are worth fifty to one hundred dollars. They are. Right. They're beautiful silver plate sets, but there's nothing I can do with them because they're, you know, at my office. But now with the auction, we're going to put them in the auction. Now the customers are going to be able to realize fifty or one hundred dollars. And when I, and they say nobody wants this, I go, no, I'm I'm the one. I'm like the last line of defense right. for a customer looking to sell something in the Southwest Florida. Right. And I, I'm very honest with them about it. They're like, do you know anyone else will buy this? I go, if I won't. There really isn't anyone else because I take shots on anything. Yes. You know, I'll research, yes. I'll look and look. And the problem comes down to shipping on those items. Yes. It costs 50 to $60 to ship a full silver set. Yeah. You know, so, so if I'm it's a $100 kidding. item, <laughs> you know, and you're spending 60 on shipping, the consumer has to pay that. Yes. So they might pay nineteen ninety nine for it if you have to ship it for 60 bucks. Yes. You know, but if you can put it in, then it's not worth anyone's time. If, yeah, if that makes be, sense. Be practical. Right? Because yeah. if we're doing, like you're saying, a 75 25 or 65 30 split or 50 50, and the item's 20 bucks, we're talking on these auction items. Yeah. It's not worth my time yeah. or anyone's. I'm paying 20 bucks an hour or two uh, to go through and take photos. People don't realize how much time goes into every auction, mm -hmm. and the pictures have to be perfect, mm -hmm. and the wording has to be perfect, and the time to upload it. Yeah. All that stuff takes time. You well, know. you know, and, and we've talked in past shows about some of the other 
items like like uh, musical instruments, yes. and vintage toys, and you see a lot of things. You know, that's another one we're going to talk about. I got on a clarinet from the 1930s, mm -hmm. and you'd think it'd be worth hundreds, right? Because it's a clarinet from the 1930s in pristine condition. You know, those it was nice. We bought it 50, 75 bucks. You can find a good item like that. Right. You know, so just because something is 100 years old, you know, she brought it in thinking it's probably going to be $500 item I'll buy it for. Mm -hmm. And I will buy it for that if, if it warrants it happily, yeah. you know. But and comps were 65, 70 bucks. And this thing was beautiful. And it was 100 years old. Be a um, great display piece. It was a clarinet. Sometimes That's what it is. I'm going to put it in the new shop and, yeah. uh, you know, it'll be a display piece along with the Tonka toys. Sure. And uh, that's what uh, people, you know, they find that, they bring it in and. You're going to you're gonna have a very well, when you move into the new location, it's going to be very well decorated or appointed. Yep. Musical instruments, hang some guitars That'll on be the nice. wall. Oh yeah, I do have you a guitar. Some really cool a nice stuff. Kalamazoo. That, yeah. uh, it's a very nice one. You've got some nice stuff. you got yeah. some nice well, stuff. Yeah, well, the Naples, the customers down here, you know, yeah. I'm just, like you said, just kind of a broker. Yeah. I have to know it. I have to know how to deal with it fairly, but sure. they have the stuff. Well, and, We have and good again, stuff down here, and that's why I opened up. Yeah. Because there's a demand. I had some stuff that I wanted to sell, and sure. it's like, well, what are my options here? Yeah. You know? I, and you found other people in the same condition. I'll good, just start it. I'll open it up and yeah, do the whole thing. Not many, yeah, for sure. So if you're interested in selling things to Scott, collectibles, the things we've talked about, anything that might have value and decent value, reach out to him at 239-961-0816. Again, he's text-friendly. Or visit parkshorecoin.com. That's parkshorecoin.com. You can send him a picture uh, text text you can you know reach out to him he'll call he'll you right, right back. back to you and call me before Very the busy. garage sale yeah <laughs> don't call me after you've had your garage sale and, say, I, think and, I, sold and I go i got a few stuff. items for you I know. and like all the other items that you know and they come in with price tags on them yeah okay that's when you know when you're getting the bottom of the barrel from it you got to be crafty and keep in mind if you do reach out to scott we may use your question whether it's text or email on, on the, the show, show. Yes. and we're going to do that right now Debbie from Bonita Springs. Debbie, if you're listening, thank you for texting this to Scott as a question. She, Debbie said, I inherited some old coins. Most of her, most are American. Some are from other countries. I don't know their value. Can you take a look? You said on your show that you do free evaluations. Of foreign coins? Yeah. 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 You bring them on in. Uh, foreign and American. She says American and foreign. Okay. Uh, but they're kind of both similar. We're going to want older than 1964 specifically even on the older ones because okay. some countries that make silver but foreign countries rarely made uh very collectible coins you have to get back to the 1800s early right. 1900s right. german coins are some collectible ones philippines has a few uh, but we're looking again for the silver content so kind of you can eye them yourself and obviously not as well as me because i've been doing it but you can just tell a copper coin or a nickel right. coin versus a silver coin right and, and but you, you can, can bring them in yeah but don't have your high, hopes up too high on foreign because everyone down here has traveled or knows someone that's traveled, and they have all this paper money, all this currency. It's obsolete. You can't even trade it in at the uh, exchange. Right. And they all have coins from 30 years ago, the 70s and 80s. And uh, unfortunately, well, there's not much we can do with it. No. There you go. That's an answer but to your question. It's worth a try. Yeah. And here's I'm gonna we're gonna do two question and answer to this segment. Here's the other question. This came from Stacy, who lives in North Naples. She said, Scott, I have, and I'm reading this from her, it uh, looks like an email. I have Tiffany designer jewelry. Is that something that you'd be interested that in? That is wonderful. That's what we go back to. Hopefully you still have the box. Keep okay. the box so that always adds a little bit of value. But that Tiffany, that high-end designer uh, jewelry is always very, very high demand. And why that is, is because uh, gold on the secondary market is traded primarily by the price of what gold is. At, right. right? Jewelry, I'm saying, right. trades primarily by the gold weight right. okay but you get these high-end items like tiffany like elizabeth Locke, uh like yvel uh like david yerman uh cartier you know just to name a few uh these are items that in retail if you go into these high-end jewelry stores you got the gold value let's just throw a number out there at two thousand dollars the price tag will be fourteen thousand five hundred so they're getting seven hundred percent on the gold value for some of this jewelry now when they bring it into park shore coin after that jewelry has been worn once on the secondary market it gets clipped much closer to that gold value yeah. now you'll be able to realize that full gold value potential maybe even a little more right. which usually isn't the case when we're buying 14 or 18 carat we want to leave ourselves a little space on the back end to make money behind spot price 
But on that high-end stuff, yeah, bring it in. It pays out really well, and it adds up really, really nicely. Right. All the tickets are usually four, five, six thousand yeah. dollars uh, when it's Tiffany gold necklaces right. and bracelets because they're heavy. They're thirty, forty grams each, and uh, you know that's two ounces right there, fourteen carat. And they're and they're well made. Between the very People well made. Recognize the name. The stamp and Tiffany, yeah, yeah. high, high demand. High, high demand. Big well, buck though, yep. Ab- but absolutely. it holds its value, and people love it. It'll always hold its. It's been around forever. And you've got people on the other side of your business that are looking for things oh, yeah. that are in demand, and they reach out to you. You have connections yeah. where things go. For on you, one, yeah, yeah. on niche items like that especially, Yeah, high-end designer stuff. If you want to sell something like that to Scott, his number is 239-961-0816, or you can reach him at parkshorecoin.com. That's right. It's his website. Again, you can go there or you can text him on his phone. Send pictures. If you're not sure about something, at least you two can have a conversation before he either comes to visit you or you come to his office. And again, as he said earlier in the show, you're welcome to come by the come by the store. Come and visit him. He's got a lot of time, and he, he will get, put in the effort and help you. 239-961-0816. 